So prior to the merge under proof of work, blocks were created by a relatively small group of mining pool operators with a sort of opaque set of de decisions and rule sets that resulted in a pretty vanilla set of, of blocks and block types. Now, uh, post-merge, proof of stake, PBS, proposal builder separation, there's the emergence of the block building market, and this creates room for various types of blocks to be created. Um, the most prevalent type of block, of course, is a max profit block, which is also max extractive for MEV, but you can have uh, gas price ordered blocks, you could have uh, no malicious MEV blocks, you can have regulatory compliant blocks, we can even have things like um, green blocks or sustainable blocks. And the, the nice part about this is because of some of the upgrades to the Ethereum network and the focus on modularity, it makes block building a composable and programmable element so developers can get creative and do things with blocks that weren't possible before. Now, if you're a validator, you have incentives to take you know, the most uh, profitable block, but maybe there's transactions in there that you don't necessarily feel comfortable about including, whether those transactions come from sanctioned addresses potentially, or whether those uh, um, transactions might be malicious MEV or toxic MEV, or end users get less, less favorable or even no settlement as a result. So as a participant in the network, as a validator, you have discretion over what sort of blocks you choose to validate. And increasingly, we believe there'll be more and more expressivity that gets uh, uh, enabled at the relayer network or the relayer layer of the network so that you know folks have choice and we think choice is generally good for the network um, we're at the very beginning of this market and its evolution so a lot of that stuff is still to come